Welcome to the April edition of What's in Bloom here at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. So every month we put together a selection of plants that are in bloom in that particular month and make a sheet that we hand out to our visitors uh, listing those plants so that they can see them for themselves as they walk around the garden. So this is our April edition of What's in Bloom. This plant is one of the kangaroo paws. Kangaroo paws are in the genus Anagosanthos in the family Hamadoraceae, and they come from Australia. They have wonderful flowers uh, that have a kind of a, a fuzziness to them, uh, hairs all over the outside of the flower. And when they open, the uh, face contrasts with the outside of the tube of the flower. And this one's just beginning to flower. The, there's the uh, first open flower right there, but it's got lots of flowers coming and really is putting on a show. Anagosanthos amber velvet. Sometimes nomenclature can be hard to keep up with. These sticky monkey flowers are an iconic plant of California, uh, widely seen in the landscape around here, and they come in various colors. This is a nice orange flowered one. Uh, some of the ones that we see in the hills around here are more on the yellow orange side. Uh, and their name now is Diplicus orontiacus, but they were long known as Mimulus orontiacus. Uh, so that's a change in the genus, but also the family has changed. They used to be in the Scrofulariaceae, and now they're in the family Frymaceae. But don't tell it to them. They're just busy doing what they always do, and they don't care what we call them. But anyway, a beautiful plant, Diplicus orontiacus. This plant is Echium candicans, also known by the name of Echium fastuosum. It's in the Borage family, Boraginaceae, and it comes from Madeira, which is a Portuguese island in the Atlantic Ocean uh, to the west of Morocco. So uh, this plant does very well in coastal parts of California because it has a similar Mediterranean climate in its uh, home island, and uh, it really makes a spectacular display in the spring. This one's just getting going. Uh, the flowers on this one are uh, blue, but they could be various shades of lavender, blue, or purple, uh, with these wonderful wands of flowers that come up in the springtime. Echium candicans. California and Baja California are well known for their many species of Dudleya. Uh, this one here is Dudleya brittani uh, from near Tijuana in Baja California, but species of Dudleya are found all up and down California as well. Dudleyas are members of the family Crassulaceae, the stonecrop family. Uh, they often have powdery white rosettes like this, but some of them have green leaves as well. Uh, this one, Dudleya brittani, is relatively easy to grow in cultivation compared to some of its similar relatives from farther north in uh, the state of California. Um, this one has uh, reddish stalks and pale yellow flowers, and it's just beginning its flowering now. Uh, makes multiple stalks and uh, really does very well in a garden setting. Dudleya brittani. Sphyralsia is a genus in the Malvaceae or the hibiscus family and their common name is desert mallow and a lot of them occur in the deserts of the southwest United States and across the border into Mexico. So this is a cultivar called Lewis Hamilton, Sphyralsia ambigua cultivar Lewis Hamilton. And it's just beginning to flower, so the flowers aren't really very widely open yet, but you can see the uh, rosy, um, pinkish-red color of the flowers, and there are lots and lots of buds here on the way. So this Sphyralsia doesn't get very big, it's, it's a, a small shrub, but it really makes a lot of flowers over the course of the blooming season, and just getting underway now. Sphyralsia ambigua, Lewis Hamilton. Grevillea is a large Australian genus in the Protea family, Proteaceae. Most of them are shrubs, like this one, but a few are trees, too. Uh, this one is a relatively new cultivar called uh, Grevillea petrophylloides big bird. And it's really made a splash since its introduction to horticulture because of these amazing wands of uh, sort of um, mauve flowers uh, that are so abundant and rise above the plant in such a dramatic fashion. The foliage of the plant has a very fine texture and uh, is really wonderful in and of itself. 
and contrasts nicely with the whitened uh, branches. Uh, but Big Bird in bloom is a showstopper, and we are really to have, happy to have it here in the Bancroft Garden. Grevillea petrophylloides, Big Bird. Ethiopia is home to some wonderful species of aloe, and amongst those is aloe campera. And this plant here is uh, the cultivar cornuta, aloe camperi cornuta. And it has wider leaves and denser flowers uh, than typical aloe camperi has. Uh, and here it is just brimming with flowers with, with a soft sort of peach pink color turning yellow as they open, but with many, many flowers. Uh, we're so, kind of surprised that an Ethiopian aloe is tough enough to be outdoors here in the garden, but you can see uh, the proof is right here that it's a great garden plant, aloe camperi cornuta. Lampranthus is a large genus in the Isoaceae or ice plant family from southern Africa. Most of the species of Lampranthus are more creepers than bushes, but this one's an exception. This is Lampranthus roseus, and it grows quite tall, as you can see. Uh, and like other Lampranthus, it really puts on a show when it blooms. This one's just getting going now, but it's just covered with flowers on the whole top of the plant when it's in full bloom. Lampranthus roseus. Leucospermum is a genus in the Protea family, Proteaceae, and they come from South Africa, and they have the common name pincushions, and these long protruding styles are what suggested that name. Uh, they are um, bushes or small trees, and quite widespread in the southwestern part of South Africa. This one is a cultivar known as Blanche Ito, Leucospermum Blanche Ito, and uh, just coming on now, so uh, some of the uh, flower clusters already have open flowers, others are at the uh, young stage, uh, but this is going to be putting on a show for quite some time now. Leucospermum Blanche Ito. Gasterias belong to the Asphodel family, Asphodelaceae, and they are related to the aloes, but Gasteria is a smaller genus than aloe and more localized geographically, so all of the species occur in South Africa. And this one here is Gasteria bicolor. Uh, its flowers have a little um, pot-bellied base and then a cream and green striped mouth, similar to those of other species in the genus. Uh, and they rise up in, in stalks with little dangling flowers, working their way upwards as the flowering progresses. Gasteria bicolor is uh, a little bit stem forming over time. It gets a, a bit of a stem, more so than most gasterias. Uh, and as a baby, the uh, leaves are all disticus, all in one plane, and then it begins to whorl as it gets older, and that's seen in many other species of gasteria as well. Uh, these gasteria bicolors are in full bloom now and looking really good. Uh, gasteria bicolor. Aromophila is a genus of shrubs from Australia in the Scrofulariaceae, and they're especially numerous in Western Australia. This one here is Aromophila alternifolia, and uh, it's got these beautiful um, red-violet flowers, and a week ago there was only a few flowers. Now it's got a lot, really uh, heading into the season here with its uh, flower display, and it's nice bright green, narrow leaves contrasting with the <clears throat> reddish violet of the flowers, uh, really making a great display. Aromophila alternifolia. The genus Pelargonium is in the geranium family, and they're often called geraniums, but they're really in a different genus, Pelargonium, in the same family, the geranium family. Uh, this one here is one of the many uh, ones with fragrant leaves. So if you rub the leaf, you get a delightful fragrance. And as you can see, it's got a beautiful flower display as well. So the flowers start out uh, as a paler pink and then turn deeper pink as they go along. And they have wonderful little red blotches on the upper two petals. Uh, this pelagonium uh, comes from South Africa, like many of the pelagoniums do. And uh, it really flowers all summer long with these beautiful pink flowers. Pelagonium hybrids. Aloe is a large genus in the asphodel family, 
and there are species all up and down Africa, particularly in the south and the eastern part of the continent, as well as into Arabia and Madagascar. Uh, but South Africa has a lot of the species that we commonly grow here in California. This one is a hybrid that I made, a hybrid of aloe burii. Burii is a relatively rare aloe from the western part of South Africa, and it has both yellow and orange forms. I like yellow flowers, so I was crossing with one of the yellow uh, forms of it, and uh, I got this plant, which uh, seems to do really well here. It's become a clump of five heads over time, and has these uh, beautiful sort of umbrella-like clusters of yellow flowers uh, in the spring and summer months. Aloe burii hybrid. Echeveria is a large genus in the stonecrop family, Crassulaceae, and there are many, many species from Mexico. Uh, there are some that range as far south as South America, but most of our cultivated ones are Mexican in origin, and that's the case of this one. This is Echeveria colorata, and it comes from the state of Jalisco in Mexico, uh, whose largest city is Guadalajara. So all around Guadalajara in the mountains, you can find various forms of Echeveria colorata. Uh, just beginning to bloom now, has tall flower stalks that nod over at the tip with these wonderful um, yellow and orange and coral colored flowers like little urns. Uh, the flowers are not terribly numerous and held well above the plant, uh, but they are very attractive when seen close up. Uh, Echeveria colorata has various forms. It could be more powdery white or more blue-green, sometimes with red tips on the, on, uh, the ends of the leaves. Uh, but a beautiful plant with a, a classic rosette form uh, these are called hen and chicks sometimes in, uh, in the nursery trade. Uh, beautiful plants, Echeveria colorata. Aloe claviflora is a wonderful species from west central South Africa and going northward into the southern part of Namibia as well. Uh, it has these uh, triangular leaves with little teeth along the edge, and then when it blooms, uh, the flowers come out like little cannon shots uh, at, coming out at an angle from the plant. So you can see here that the lowest flowers are open, have their yellow stamens protruding, and the upper flowers are still at the bud stage. Uh, just a spectacular plant. It grows in interior areas where the rain is sparse, but mostly in the summer, and uh, where it can get cold in the wintertime. Uh, so we're happy that it does well here at the garden and really makes a wonderful display when it comes into bloom, aloe claviflora. And while we're here, I just want to point out uh, its neighbor here, which is Euphorbia polygona variety Nivea, uh, a wonderful Euphorbia from South Africa uh, that has these purplish cyathea, which is the flowering structure of a Euphorbia, and it's in full bloom now too. Not as uh, showy perhaps as the aloe claviflora, but wonderful in its own way. And since it's right here, I thought I'd throw that in too. Aleogeny is an Australian genus in the hibiscus family, Malvaceae. And uh, this one here is Aleogeny hugulii uh, and the cultivar Santa Cruz. The common name is blue hibiscus, and yes, it's in the hibiscus family, and yes, the flowers look very hibiscus-like, but it's not actually in the genus hibiscus. Uh, but really putting on a spectacular show with all these purple flowers, Aleogeny hugulii, Santa Cruz. Aloe is a large genus in the asphodel family, asphodelaceae, and uh, recently there have been some uh, new genera um, split off of aloe, uh, this one has long been known as aloe plicatilis, the fan aloe, because the leaves are in a fan. Uh, but now it's been suggested it should have its own genus, Kumara, and uh, that would be Kumara plicatilis. But however, that name really hasn't uh, found its way into horticulture much as yet, and perhaps it's a little bit controversial, so we can call it aloe plicatilis. In any case, it comes from mountains near Cape Town uh, and gets a lot of rain in its habitat, uh, perhaps uh, 60, 70 inches or more of uh, winter rainfall up in the mountains where it grows. Uh, it does very well here in California because we also have winter rains, uh, and it doesn't really need as much rainfall as it gets 
uh, in habitat. It does fine on uh, maybe 20 or 30 inches like we get around here. Uh, a beautiful plant and uh, it forms a trunk and in some cases gets wider than tall, in some cases taller than wide, but a uh, large plant in habitat can be maybe 10 feet tall, so it can get pretty big in time. Uh, the flowers, as you can see, are coral colored and rising up right now. Uh, the first flower is just about to open on this plant now, Aloe plicatilla. Aloes belong to the asphodel family, and uh, this particular one is named Aloe harlana. It comes from Ethiopia, named after the little town of Harla in Ethiopia. Um, it's a uh, species is not all that common. Uh, oftentimes when you see it offered for sale in a nursery, it's actually a smaller relative, Aloe hemingii or uh, Aloe somaliensis. Uh, but Aloe harlana, as you can see, gets pretty big. And uh, the leaves are glossy and have um, streaks and spots on them uh, that are more distinct when it's young and less distinct as it gets older. And the flower stalk has uh, branches on it and clusters of sort of a um, dark orangey red color. Uh, this one is still at the bud stage, hasn't uh, opened any flowers yet, but we have pictures of it from last year that we can uh, show you what the flowers look like. Uh, its uh, first inflorescence is here, and it's got another one coming, so it's going to be in flower for some time now, Aloe harlana. This plant is a hybrid aloe, Aloe hardii ex rubra violacea. So aloes are in the asphodel family, and they occur widely in Africa, Arabia, and Madagascar. And this one has parents, one of which is from South Africa, and the others which, other of which is from Arabia. So uh, this is not a hybrid that would happen in nature. Um, it's a, a large plant that tends to sort of flop to the side because uh, neither parent grows upright. And we really like it because of its uh, amazing reblooming tendency. So it now has uh, several uh, branches of flowers that are open now, as well as uh, more on the way, and even more down in the middle coming after that. Aloe hardii ex rubra violacea. Pelargonium is a genus in the geranium family. Uh, the pelargoniums are often referred to as geraniums, but they really are a separate genus in the same family as the geraniums. Uh, this one here is Pelargonium echinotum from the northwest corner of South Africa. So that's in the winter rainfall zone, and uh, this plant goes deciduous in the summertime. Uh, here it is at the end of winter, and the plant's in full leaf and also in full flower, looking really glorious. So you notice on the flowers, there is uh, from white to various shades of pink on there. Well, the flowers start out white and then turn light pink and then dark pink as they go along, so that you get this range of colors. Uh, the stems, which are not visible now because the leaves are present, have little spines on them, and that's unusual for pelagonium, and the stems are also succulent. Pelagonium echinotum. The genus Rus is commonly known as sumac, and it belongs to the Anacardiaceae. So this is Rus ovata, the name referring to its oval leaves, and it's native to California as well as uh, neighboring Arizona and down into northern Baja, California. Uh, it's a very versatile shrub, gets to be pretty big as you can see, and it does well in shade or sun, gets some of each here in its position at the Ruth Bancroft Garden, and when it blooms, it has these uh, flowers with little tiny round pink buds opening to white flowers, and it's uh, just getting going now. Rus ovata. That brings us to the end of our April What's in Bloom. But remember, we only have a selection of plants that are in bloom in the month at hand on our What's in Bloom, and there's lots more to be seen here at the garden. So we encourage you to come pay us a visit in person if you live in the area and are able to do so. If not, we have a wealth of material on our website and uh, you can visit us to look at uh, the plant highlights, the uh, past versions of What's in Bloom from previous months, and, and a listing of our workshops and seminars and upcoming events at the garden. Uh, there's a world going on here at the Ruth Bancroft Garden and we invite you to participate.